Hi guys, thanks for joining me. And on this video, I just wanted to go over a feature in Photoshop called Apply Image. Apply Image, what it essentially does is it creates a flattened version of whatever document you've got um, and turns it into a mask uh, that you can then, then use to do whatever you want with really. Um, but just let me show you a couple of different examples of what that means. And uh, I mean, we may have all heard of the feature in here called Shadows and Highlights, which uh, can be found in Image Adjustments down here, Shadows and Highlights. And in here you can basically choose which which bits uh, in terms of the shadows, you can brighten the shadows and you can darken the highlights and so on and so forth. And um, can be a little bit hit and miss and it's certainly not adjustable after the fact. So if I okay that, I can't then adjust it or anything like that. So uh, it can be destructive unless you make duplicates of layers and so on and so forth. But with the apply image, uh, let's just go over what, what that is. So I'm just gonna come down here and create a new adjustment layer. I'm gonna choose curves. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything just yet. I just wanna show you the apply image. And as soon as you create a new adjustment layer, uh, you've already got the mask selected here. So at the moment there's nothing on the mask. But if I go up to the image and then apply image, it brings up this box here and what it's doing, and you can see the results down here in the mask thumbnail. So what it's doing is it's creating the merged. So granted there's only the background layer here, but if there was more than that, then it would merge, merge everything um, using all the channels. I'm leaving it uninverted. So with masks, the whiter areas, and you can see on the thumbnail down there, but they're the ones that are gonna be affected. Um, so if we just invert that, then as you can see, that the hair here, the dark bit in the hair, that's now gonna be affected. So just to show you, I'm just gonna, just gonna okay that. Um, if we come on here, I just clicked on the mask using Alt, Alt or Option. Just click on the, on the mask here and that shows you what the, what the mask is actually doing. And now if I just come into the curves and I, and I brighten this, this is now just, just affecting the shadows, okay? Um, so it's just affecting the shadows in the image and we can darken them down if you want to as well. Um, but, so we could just brighten them up a little bit. Also, what we could do now is because we're just using the shadows, we could come in and we could actually just color this shadow layer as well. Um, granted, you, you can do this without having to apply the mask, but this really does specifically just target the, the shadows. So even if I um, was to, be playing around with the highlights up here. There isn't really any highlights in this image at the moment because it's masked out. So you haven't got any worry of affecting those. So you can come in and adjust those shadows specifically. Um, great, okay. Um, so now we can then do the same again. I'm just gonna un unclick that because remember when we create the apply image, the mask, it creates all, uses all the layers. I don't want it to include that when I create another one. I'm just going to create another adjustment layer, the curves again. I'm going to leave it again, and this time I'm going to go up to image, apply image. And then I'm going to un-invert it. So again, so now the, the, the highlight areas here is what's going to be affected. Um, so this is, I'm going to do an adjustment layer that just affects the highlights, so it's not inverted. So now we can darken it down and then just be affecting the highlights. Okay. Um, and again, we can come in here and maybe add some, add some color to those if we wanted to as well. Okay, so there's another way of doing some color toning as well, uh, but just using the shadows and the, and the highlights separately and non-destructive as well, because we can come in and change those as and when we want to. But really the apply image opens up loads of different options really. You can come in, you can do whatever you want with it really, it's especially with the adjustment layers. So for example, hue and saturation, uh, you could you could really maybe just really desaturate the shadows if you wanted, um, or even try and color those like this using, the, using that. Okay, and come in here, go up to image, apply image, Really, I just want to affect the shadows, so I want to invert this. Okay, 
and then now this will just really be affecting the darker areas of the image. Okay. Um, granted, that's not the best example of hue and saturation because there's many of those things that you can do with the curves, but it's just another thing that, that you can do. Um, what else is there? You could you could in fact just add just a just a new layer. I'm just gonna add a new layer. Um, and I'm gonna add to that in a second, but what I want to do is I want to create a mask for this new layer. So I'm gonna use image, apply image. Create a mask first, that'll do it. Okay, so image, apply image, and then so again, I just want to use the shadows. So now I've got a blank layer that I can do whatever I want with, really. Um, but again, it's only going to be affecting the shadows. Okay. So there you go. Only affecting the shadows. Uh, right, let's get rid of that. But so what we could do with that is we could add. Uh, let's have a look. Come in here. Let's choose a gradient. And. Um, Yep, dark and light gradients, that works well, that's fine. Okay, come in here and still use still on that layer. Um, and you could come in, uh, again you can see how it's unaffecting the, the highlight areas. You can come in, maybe you can bring it down, screen or multiply or bring this right down. Okay, so you can start to create some nice color effects with that in there. Uh, that, that works quite well actually. Okay. So the sky's the limit really. Um, and with that, e even though it's quite obviously a dramatic gradient, but because it's only affecting the shadows, only affecting the shadows, it doesn't actually seem to be that aggressive overall on the on the image. But all these things can be can be combined if you want. Um, just one other last thing to to note as well is that with any of these once you've in there let's say with this mask here i didn't actually want it to affect the hair so i've done it and i go oh, do you know what i don't want it to affect the hair as much i just want it to bring in the lighten up the shadows with that orange down here in the arm let's have a look so that's the mask but so i want to mask out more of the hair what i wouldn't recommend doing is coming in here and actually playing with the mask itself because that's going to be quite destructive okay so if we look so yeah granted I haven't masked out the hair but it's quite destructive and I can't really undo that so I'm just going to come back okay um, get rid of that but if I put this whole layer into a new group and then I can create a mask for that group and then I can mask out the hair if I wanted to manually, but just on just on that mask there. Okay. So again, very non-destructive way of of doing it. Okay. As you can see there, yeah, that's the mask in there, and I can I can cancel that if I don't if I don't like the look of it or whatever. I can. I can certainly turn that off. There you go. Yeah, so I can turn that off um, and still get the and still get the effect. So, yeah, that's apply image, guys. Give it give it a go. Uh, it's really useful, um, not just for these shots as well, but for um, any any type of shot really where you just like a bit more control and maybe with color toning and that sort of thing. Depends on depending on how you do it. Some people like to do some toning at the start of the image, um, and when you're doing that, you want to make sure that you that you that you you do have the option to change it at a later date. Anyway, I hope that's been useful. Surely there's uh, something in there that, that that you can find to try on your own images. By all means, let me know. Send them across to me. But if you want to see any more tips and techniques, then head on over to my photography page at on Facebook that's, um, or on my website. You've got lots of different techniques and tips and lighting tutorials and videos, etc., etc., etc. So, anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.